and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm starting my playthrough or walkthrough. Let's see how things go off the Vikinger Saga, which translates into the Viking Saga, but I think you all guessed it already. Yeah, the artwork is pretty clear on this one. This is being published by Schmidtspiele and thanks so much for providing me a review copy here. So yeah, whatever I say, you be be warned, it's a review copy. Um, but again, I'm not usually doing reviews, as you know, I'm really playing the games. And I really must say up front, I really like this game. Um, I was surprised. Um, it comes with a lot of replayability. It comes with a lot of, I would say, not really storytelling, but there are stories in this game and it's merely replayable endlessly. I think that's really the cool thing because there are so many ways on how you can set up your adventures and what cards you get and, and so on. Well, this is really, really a great joy for me. And as some of you who might basically follow my channel, they know that I really like sandbox kind of games that are really, basically really replayable endlessly. This is really what I like. I think without further ado, let's simply get into the game. That's pretty much the setup for a two-player game. And we are playing the very first adventure. It has to do with Swartalfheim. And I really will not make any attempts to translate a lot of this stuff into English. On the back side, on these so-called adventure cards, there is a long text really describing what you see. And I think you're supposed to really, when you, whatever, play this adventure for the first time, read it to everyone who's playing. I'm not going to do that because, again, I will not translate those as I go. That, with that being said, yes, it's a German version of the game. I believe there is no English copy out there yet, so you have to bear with me. But in order to play it, it's really not important to really go behind each of those. Again, if you want to dive in into the Nordic mythology, then yes, you should definitely go out and, and read stuff. I think the proper term is for these Schwarzalben here. There's basically some, some sh shadow elves or so. I think it's Dörkhalfar might be completely wrong, but I think all those locations here in Schwarzalfheim, I think this is really the proper pronunciation. I might be wrong though, whatever it is. All of those components come with lovely, lovely artwork. Um, here are our two Vikings. Um, it's a kind of a light deck builder, I would say. But it also has to do with a little bit push your luck. And in the end, you really want to land with your Viking on this adventure card here. And wherever you end your move, you get a bonus or you get a penalty. For example, if you end your move, you turn on this space here or below this space here on 21, you get three coins. How nice is that? And if you do the same here, you get two coins and two victory points. So whenever you see a little um, helmet here, you um, basically get a victory point, but you can also lose a victory point if you land here and you don't have to stop. So in theory, you can keep moving, but then also terrible stuff can happen. But again, I will come to that as I go. These, um, I think adventure markers here, this is also basically being dictated by the adventure here. So you place one on 10, 13 and 16 totally randomly. So there are a lot of different um, um, tokens available in this cup. There are also some variants how to use those. I will go with the standard version here. So here you get a God card. Um, here you can basically look into the future and look for those, um, I don't know, travel cards here, for example. And here that's a cool one. For example, you can send one of your Vikings to Valhalla, which is nice because the last, very last adventure, basically where you go to the B first is the adventure where you have to use your Dead Vikings, no longer your uh, live Vikings. Really nice twist actually in this game. And yeah, as I said, this is pretty much the setup for the first adventure. I think there are nine different um, adventures to choose from for the very first stage alone. And then there is something for the high sea. And then there is something for the next two worlds where there's also a lot of mix. So you can mix and match this game really, really endlessly. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Each of the players will start the game with their own set of cards. So this is the blue player. So he has Harald, he has Solveig. All of the players have the same set of cards with different colors. We all start the game with five coins and no, those metal tokens do not come with the game. But again, I prefer those. They're not really Viking themed, but they will do. 
Here is the starting player for this round. That's Odin with his Raven. So blue will go first. We are not shuffling this deck yet because the first thing that we will do now before we go into any adventure, but the last, you basically get to buy extra cards. So let's have a look at the cards which are currently uh, available. So here we have Eric. He costs five and he allows you to move your Viking backwards six bases. Why would I move backward? I think I will come to that when I start playing, but rest assured, he's a pretty cool dude. Then we have Ellen. And yes, of course, you also have a lot of um, female Vikings in this game because this is also thematic. There were a lot of shield maidens back then. Um, she only costs three. Um, she provides you to victory point, but only if she makes it to Valhalla. So you have to sacrifice in order to score those points. Another great, great mechanic here. She allows you to move two spaces or you have to move two spaces when you play her, but she also has a special ability. This is a German one. This says every time you have to spend gold because of a penalty, for example, you also gain two victory points. So that's definitely a nice thing. Then we have a Magnus here. He basically also provides you two um, helmets. He has an instant effect when you play him. And he also has basically an effect that triggers at the end of a turn. I would say so here you can do stuff with some cards and you can redraw and then you draw two cards instead of one so that's always a nice character and he's pretty affordable with three for that special ability then we have Gunnar he's amazing so he can move you nine spaces it's not always great to be honest also comes with two victory points um, when we play him you immediately get two gold and yeah it costs you two coins Blue is the starting player, so he has to make a choice first. And here, yeah, I think it's going to be Magnus for him. So he will spend three coins in order to crap him. We put him on top of his deck because we will shuffle the deck right after we purchased. Then it's the red player. Hmm. In theory, he's really great, but maybe I should basically play them both a little bit differently. What do you think? She's okay too, but the problem is in this very first adventure, there aren't any spaces where you would lose gold. So I think that's not the best bet. So it's either him in order to get gold. That's again, never a bad thing. You can afford more Vikings later on, or again, going for Magnus here. Mm, let's play differently. He will spend two gold and order to go for Gunnar. Now it's back to blue. The problem is the second Viking that you purchase after the first costs you one gold more and then the third Viking two more gold and so on. Right now he's down to two gold so he cannot afford any more of those. In theory Red could do the same thing again. Could go for Gunnar again now paying three gold but I think he's not going to so they will now both pass so they will both now shuffle their decks and we can start playing the game by the way i used more or less a predefined setup for my overall campaign for the whole basically big adventure again each adventure consists of i believe eight eight adventures if i'm not mistaken and i used the so-called most difficult one not sure what it means but <laughs> see how things go and I'm also not sure if I will play this to the bitter end so you have to tell me if you want me to continue playing this but again it's really fun not sure if it's fun to watch but it's fun to play that much is clear okay the very first thing that we do at the start of each turn is to draw our very first um, travel card here I believe those are called so we will basically flip them over in most cases it only shows you a number between one to seven, I believe, and each of those are in the deck twice. So we now know, okay, one, four is gone. This is important information. The rules are not really specific if you are allowed to go through the discard pile. But again, I really don't enjoy memory games. So that's why I allow this. What this means is we will now move this little board here four spaces ahead. So the adventure will always progress and that's really also so 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 important we will always at least move some spaces because of um yeah this travel card here so we basically see here the viking one two three and four so basically all our both of our vikings will now start the game on space 
four here. Now each of the players have drawn their starting hands of card, which during the first round is always three for the first play uh, for all of the players, and that's usually defined um, how many cards you get on where you are on the victory point track. So the first player on the victory track, who has the most victory points, only gets to draw three cards. Second four five and so on. If it's tied, then they basically share the second space. In this case, both of the players start with five victory points. So they are both first, so they get to draw three cards. And I apology, or my apologies for the glare on the cards, but really I had to sleep, so we really played the heck out of this game already. So I really felt it's definitely better. And to be honest, my deck builders are all sleep. Yeah, or even legendary. Um, with a lot of expansion. Um, and what players will now do is to choose one of those Vikings and I will maybe, I will play open with one of the players. Why not use the blue character here? So let me take out my smart little card holder here. I know I'm not getting sponsored by Eraptor in any way. So if you are, I can cover it up. Sorry for that. Anyhow, this is basically my hand of cards for this very first turn. So I have a two or a six. So Kier is really a great guy. Ragnar, hey, we all know Ragnar. He can move you ahead. He's really driving force, it seems. And then we have Bjorn. I think that's his son, right? I think at least when I remember the series Vikings, then I think he's Bjorn uh, Ironside. I believe so. At least I think it is. He's blonde, so I think it makes sense. Oh yeah, that's basically the starting hand for the blue player and we now get to choose which card to play for those. So how do I choose, you might think, or you might ask. So let's have a look at the game board here. So when I play a card, let's say I decide to play Bjorn as my card. All of the players will play their cards face down. Not really sure what difference it makes actually because there is nothing that you can take away from anyone. That's how it goes. I still prefer it this way anyway. But what this means, I have to move now my Viking one space. I have to move it. Not up to one space, one space. That's really, really critical. There is nothing to gain here, but it's okay. I still have plenty of time to make it here to the adventure card in Svartalfheim. And again, I'll apologize <laughs> if I'm butchering those names here. So bear with me. So basically, or ideally, I will make it to one of those adventure tokens here. Those are all good for me. So I think going there is never a bad thing. There are also adventure tokens, which will later on make you lose stuff like coins here. But right now we do not care about this. And to be honest, this one here is a pretty, pretty tasty one. So I think for Blue, it's clear that he wants to play care because when you reveal him, you get to choose, hey, I want to move two or six spaces. Awesome. And so I can play this open. You have seen the card, but this is the card for the red player. So we will all reveal at the same time. Hey, and see what? He also has care in his hand. Perfect. So they will move both six spaces ahead. So four plus six is 10. So they ended up on this space here, which means both of those get one of the God cards. That's really great. First action and both get a great card out of this. Um, and I think you already assumed if I don't land on it exactly. So let's say blue would move in here. Passing doesn't give me anything. I really have to land on the space. So now we get the bonus. Those cards are basically now placed to the right of the Viking shield because this shows me, hey, these are the Vikings that are currently with me on this current adventure. At the end of this adventure, they all get discarded, but I also get to choose one of those gals and guys to send to Valhalla underneath my bugler here. And then this shows me, okay, this is a character that I can use uh, during my very last adventure, which again is B first. This is always the same thing. So these are the two remaining cards. But yeah, that's I do the same for the blue player, apparently placing it next to the shield. Then each of the players will draw one and two of those god cards and then get to choose one and put the other one on the bottom of this stack here. So let's see what the blue player gets. Well, and that was a lucky find. He found Loki. Again, they also come with numbers, so they also allow you to move your Viking ahead. So Loki three and Thor six, and they all uh, both have an instant effect here. For example, Loki allows you to use the ability 
of another Viking that has been played by basically any player. I think this means only other players in this case. Um, only if it's only, it's only good to you if the other character or other Viking has a special ability. But sometimes you say, okay, uh, I'm okay. I just need the three now. That's good enough. I can forfeit these special abilities down there whenever I want. And Thor allows you to basically take one card from your draw deck under your uh, shield of Valhalla or your buckler of Valhalla. And then we get also the money that this character was worth. And it also gives you an additional Viking um, towards the end of Bifur. So he is really cool too. Um, and to be honest, I think blue will go for Thor. So this guy goes to the bottom of the deck. And uh, Thor, unfortunately, I cannot take him to my hand. He doesn't go to my discard pile. I place him on the bottom of my draw pile, of my standard draw pile. So not very likely that I get him this turn, but later on those cards are being shuffled. And I will also do the same now for the red player, but I'm not going to tell you which god he chose. And then last but not least, all of the players now in theory can make a choice if they want to end the adventure, but no one landed on one of the adventure spaces or hopped off this little extra board here or made it uh, beyond that adventure card. This is right now not an option. So they both have to carry on. And this means that normally both of the players get to re basically replenish their hand of card by drawing a card. This was the card for the red player. I will do the same. For the blue player, Zero is always cool, Harald. I think Zero is cool. It gives you a lot of flexibility. This is kind of a problematic hand because you can move fast, basically with Ragnar, or very slow with Harald or Bjorn. So I'm not really sure if I like this. But let's move into the next round. So again, we will draw our next travel card, and that's only a one. So we are moving ahead accordingly. And if you see now the next interesting thing, this is what you have to count for. So basically if blue would play a two, he could land on this space here, which gives you one of those tokens. And those tokens must be spent in this adventure when you get those in order to peak uh, for the next yeah, travel card here. This can really help you a lot when you are here and if you're thinking, hey, do I want to continue my adventure or do I want to end because I know where I will end up with my hand of cards, really tactical. And this one here would require a five. Oh, and then I could send one of my Vikings from my hand to the Viking shield. That's always a good thing. Of course, you're losing Viking stand. So whoever is under your Valhalla buckler cannot be used for the remainder of the game until you're moving to Bifrost. And then again, you will only use those characters. Huh, okay, both the players will now have to make a call. And to be honest, there is no reason not to use Ragnar for... Yeah, I think he will play Ragnar again. I will play him openly. And I believe Rad will play this card here. So he will play Mika that moves him three spaces. So he passed this, so he doesn't get it. Later on, by the way, there are travel cards that are being shuffled in that are coming from the different worlds. So I placed one specific... Um, travel card from Swarthalfheim into the travel deck here and some of those also show minus values. I really didn't look at this right now. Normally you should but I forgot about that. But anyway he played the three he has made it here and then we have the blue player and he will simply move to 19. So he already made it to the adventure. Right now he will simply gain two coins. That's what it says here. And again, both of the players can now make a choice if they want to end the adventure. Red can't because again, he has not reached this space. Or blue can make a decision. The good thing about that is you get to draw first and then can make a choice. That's Solvik. So now he does have some good options here actually. And to be honest, I think he will continue with his adventure. So we will also draw a card for the red player. Uh, so yeah, the problem still is there is also a seven in these travel cards. So when he draws to seven, he will move to 26 and then he will lose a victory point. That's not the end of the world, but there is still some good stuff to be taken here. So I think 
let's take the chances let's draw the next travel card and that's a two i think a two is okay so let's see we're moving from five to seven and that's actually pretty perfect for the blue player so he will totally play his one so bjorn right now red doesn't know that and yeah what should i be doing with red i have to think about this for a second and i think he will go for this card here which is gunna so he will end up on 25 so first of all he gets two gold for gunna that's definitely a good start and he will also get two gold because he ended his journey on this base here so pretty nice there too so he really has a lot of money now so this guy is played for blue it's even better he will move in here which means he will score two points but let's start with those two coins here and i mean getting um, victory points in this game is definitely what it is all about the problem is he is now in the lead which means he will only draw three cards whereas the red player will draw four cards in the next round being the second player can really help you're not playing more cards but you have more choices again both of the players can now decide if they want to stop their adventure or if they want to continue again both of the players can still draw cards first of all and i think i will do that red will definitely call it a day ah blue still has the zero um and the zero can help him but the other one is a five and let's see what the third card would be oh that's a six of course if i'm really now drawing a very low card here things would be okay let's say i draw one or i draw a three then i could definitely use it everything else is bad so i think in this case blue will also stop here we will discard those travel cards they're not getting shuffled back immediately so sarah said us uh, they are set aside for now apologies um, but we will do some cleanup now so those adventure markers go away again there is a variant where you simply put those back to the pile of or to the cup and then you draw basically three new ones every time i will play with the standard version of the game so you're really going through all of those adventure tokens so the next adventure will definitely come with different ones or most likely with different ones our guys will move back we both get to make a choice now if you want to send one of our Vikings to Valhalla. And usually you should really do that. He is, I think we need him. Um, getting rid of him early adventure, I think it's not a good idea. Ragnar, he's a tricky one. So it's either Ragnar and or Bjorn. As I have bought Magnus during my last, I think we already have a high one. So I think i will get rid of ragnar so i will place him underneath my shield i can look at this anytime but again i cannot use this guy for the rest of the game until i'm going to be first later on but he will score me one victory point both of those go back to my deck of cards again if i buy something they come there too and i reshuffle anyway the same will be done for the red player and to be honest I'm tempted to send Gunnar now. He's two points and they also give me some gold. But to be honest, I need gold more at the start of the game because then I can continue buying more powerful stuff at the end. Every three coins is still one victory point. But hmm, I think let's hold on to Gunnar and simply send Mika now to my or to Valhalla. So he's waiting for us. In the final adventure those two cards are discarded we get rid of this adventure for now this goes away too because our next adventure is a sea adventure how nice is that so we will basically replace that with this one here so our vikings will start on the viking ship the only real difference to this viking ship is it's significantly shorter than this one here and whenever you move over off this path here so if the blue player would move over uh, from this space from the ship your adventure is over and you will suffer a penalty the same is true for this one here but it's significantly longer so you really have to to move very very slow on this ship and there are always 
to see adventures in, in a game, usually at least if you follow the rules. Apparently it's your game, you can do whatever you want, but if you want somewhat balanced game, then yes, you will usually have two of those sea adventure. Let's see what this is. And this is on the high seas, the sea demon, I believe. You see, you can definitely score a lot of points, but yeah, you can also lose some stuff. This here, for example, means you have to really destroy one of your Vikings that you played. You cannot send him to Valhalla, but destroy it. It's not a legacy, legacy game, so please don't <laughs> put your cards. Um, it's basically um, removing it from the game and you cannot use it. It's a very short adventure, as you see, so we only need 14 movement altogether in order to finish it, but also, and soon, could be a problem because as of 21 or beyond, you will basically lose a victory point, which is not really a bad thing. The starting player will now move to the next player clockwise. In this case, that's the red player. They both get to buy new Vikings now, and they all have a lot of money. I think red is at seven, and yeah, blue is at six, so that's definitely something. In Sea Adventures, you don't get new cards into the game. As of the adventure next here, the Necropolis in Hellheim, for example, we will see new Vikings getting added to the marketplace here. So the choice gets much higher and there will also new travel cards shuffled into the deck. Really a lot will go on here. But I think for today I will call it. If you want me to continue, I'm more than happy to continue because I really, really enjoy this game. If you say, yeah, it was fine to watch, but yeah, let's move on then I will do so too. But uh, to be honest, I think I will play at least one or two more videos or and or episodes in this one here and maybe even play it to the bitter end. Things will really speed up. Now I have really explained to you the core rules by playing and I think as of this adventure, things will progress much, much faster, I think. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed my little playthrough so far of the Viking saga, the Vikinger saga. Um, again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons out there. If you want to support the show, please check out my Patreon. Patreon, you will find the link in the description of this video. And I think it will pop up somewhere during this video anyway. Like and subscribe my channel um, if you want to support me another way. Every like counts and helps. Really appreciate it. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. Stay safe, really do. And yeah, until then, bye bye. <laughs>